Well, 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 what do we have here? New hat, new intro. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. Listen, I know, new intro, weird, uncomfortable, where's the old one? I don't, I don't, I don't. Listen, it's just like when you get a new operating system on your phone, at first it's uncomfortable and strange, but after a while you get used to it and you realize it's better than the old one, hopefully. On this episode, I wanted to accomplish two things. First being another challenge to myself to do a cool speed build. And the second thing was I wanted to put the shiftinglines.com circular cutting board that I reviewed last week to a practical use for the first time in an actual build. I figured a good thing to create would be a little well. It's got a circle bit and it's something that I could build detailed and fast. While not the most exciting piece of terrain, it is very practical. A lot of D&D encounters take place in a town or a village and those towns or villages have wells and these can be a cool part of combat. Before we jump into the actual build portion of this video, I want to take a moment to give a huge, huge, heartfelt thank you to all of you that have decided to support me in this channel on Patreon and for all of you that have been using my Amazon affiliate links to make your purchases. That help is so appreciated and needed. I don't, I can't even, just thank you. Let's build. So I start this build by cutting out a circle to act as my well base. And for that, I'm using the shiftinglands.com uh, circular cutting board. And I just picked a kind of eyeballed random size using a random thickness of foam. It really doesn't matter. This is a speed build and I just made it up as I went along. So here, cut a little circle. And now I'm gonna cut out the inner circle and I'm doing that just by shifting over the board and turning it on, letting the wire go through, and then cutting out that inner circle. Now I'm gonna take that plug that was made and I'm gonna slice it down a little bit thinner so that I can glue it back into that circle to act as the bottom of the well. I also split that outer circle in half to kind of act as the two courses of bricks. I then get to work milling up pieces to act as the timbers on the well structure as well as some very thin strips to use for the shingles later on. I find that pre-doing this makes the rest of the build go a lot faster. Now I'm just going to quickly lay out some brickwork. Using a knife to score the indentations and then I'll take a pencil just to make those little edge grooves. Now I'm just gonna glue in the bottom of that well, that little plug I made earlier, and hot glue together the splits in that outer ring. Same with the top course, and glue that onto the bottom one. Now I'm just gonna take the old trusty tin foil to give this foam a bit of a stone texture. And I wasn't really happy with the big, simple brickwork, even for a speed build. So I decided to go back in and start drawing in some smaller, more interesting stonework onto this well. Now it's time to move on to the timbers. I use a nail file to kind of break the edges and I just start cutting my two upright pieces. And I'm just using the pen here to draw in some exaggerated wood grain. Here I'm using the same toothpick technique that I used in my lantern build. Just poking it through the foam timbers to give them a lot more strength. It also is a great way to fasten the pieces to the well. Just a little bit of PVA glue, stab that thing right in there, and after that dries, it's gonna be really strong.
You'll see here when I put this top center uh, timber on, I actually leave it quite a bit long because I'm not sure at this point what I want to do yet with the roof and I know I can cut it off later. And here I'm just cutting the little support brackets. These are a little bit finicky, but I just make them really, really quick. Eyeball the angle, draw on a bit of wood grain. And then when I attach them, I actually use some little metal push pins and I cut off the excess and glue them in place and leave that little bit of pin inside the foam forever, much like the toothpick just for some extra weight. Here I just grab some thin cardboard to work as the undercarriage uh, to hold the shingles. I would have preferred to use some chipboard here because it's thinner, but this was the thinnest stuff that I had on hand and again, speed build. And I just hot glue these in place. Now it's time for the shingles. Take the really thin strips that I cut up and use a wire brush just to give them a bit of wood grain and then just randomly do a bunch of vertical slits. And then I go in with a knife and cut little angles um, between these slits at different lengths and it gives these shingles a very fast variation. And again, speed build. So I'm just gonna hot glue these in place send them long, cut them off after, and just quickly bang off this roof. And those simple techniques are really coming together here. I decided I wanted to cap the roof with a bit of timber, so I just glue on a really thin strip that has some wood grain drawn on it. And then at this point, I cut that other support member down a little bit shorter. Drawing in some wood grain, doing a little bit of circles on the end to make it look like a log. And here I'm making some fascia board to cover the corrugation on the cardboard. Again, just thin strips, a little bit of wood grain, hold it up in place to cut it to length and just hog glue it on. And just a little bit more wood grain on the end there so it doesn't look like a cut bit of styrofoam and that is pretty much that. I'm really happy with the way this came out. At this point I probably only put about 30 or 40 minutes of build time into this thing and considering that it looks pretty good. Now I need that little center spindle that holds the rope uh, to crank up the bucket. So I just took another piece of foam, but I really, really beveled the edges so that it was round, drew on my wood grain and rolled it a bit to make it a little bit rounder, glued it in place and used some push pins to hold it. And I actually drove them all the way in and just left them there forever. And here I just make up a very simple little lever handle for this thing thin strip of foam and then I take a cutoff of toothpick to act as the actual handle and also hold this piece of foam in place. I decided that the roof needed a little bit of embellishment so I cut some thin strips of foam and laid them across the top and these will later get painted up like metal and look like a nice iron banding. Give a bit of character to this piece. The push pins will hold these down as the glue dries and then the little holes they form will be a nice little detailed touch when it comes to painting. Of course, like every project, I coat this thing in my Blackmagic base coat, Mod Podge and black paint. Now clean up some of this mess from the speed build and get to work painting it. I mixed an excessive amount of brown paint here because for some reason I was being very picky about the color. I don't know why, that is way more paint than you would ever need to paint such a little piece. Just doing a very simple paint job here. One coat of brown, one coat of a kind of medium gray.
And already you can kind of see this thing starting to come to life. Now just a light dry brushing with a khaki or a tan to kind of weather the wood as well as bring out all of those grain details that I had drawn in and done with the wire brush. And to keep things simple, I dry brush the stone with the very same color. And to finish it off, I just use a off-white or vanilla to do one final dry brushing of the stone. Now going in with a bit of metallic gray gunmetal to do that iron banding as well as the handle. Oh, and don't forget that little rivet. Now it's time to bring out all the great detail by doing the black wash. Probably my favorite part of every build because this is when you really see everything pop. And once the wash dried, I gave the whole thing a coat in clear satin Minwax polyurethane. And I did this before the artificial water because if you spray this on artificial water, you'll lose that nice glossy look. This well also needed a rope. The only thing I had on hand was this little bit of leather, so I painted it tan, glued it in place, and wrapped it around that center spindle. I also hot glue the end of the rope to the base so it looks like it's dropping straight down into the well. Here's the fun part. Five minute dollar store epoxy with a little bit of blue and black paint mixed in so that this looks like really deep water in this well. And since it's such a small little awkward area, I use one of these little children's Advil syringes to squeeze the epoxy into the well, and then just move it around, tap it a bit to even it out. Five minutes later, and I have some awesome looking water. One final touch up coat of tan on the rope and this thing is done. And with not much more than an hour of build time, I got myself a really cool looking well that'll really dress up any village or town scene on my game table. There you have it guys, proof positive that you can build cool terrain pieces on a time crunch not that hard. I hope that you have pulled some techniques from this video, but more importantly, I hope that it inspires you to sit down and build and not be intimidated by time constraints. Without question, the reason I can accomplish these speed builds is because I combine good techniques with the right tools and equipment. You need all three to make things look awesome really fast. Just the reality. If you want to pick up any of the tools and supplies that I use, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There you will find my Amazon affiliate store where you can buy all the stuff that I recommend. And as mentioned at the beginning of this video, those purchases help me, help this channel, help my family, and overall, it's just awesome. Consider supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. It goes a long way, and I would love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. As always, if you found this video helpful, hit that like button, drop me a comment below, share this video with your friends and family. Heck, show it to your grandma. She'll think it's really weird and maybe interesting. Until next week, guys, cheers, happy crafting.